Our 16th competitor today is Brian Tim from the Department of Sociology. The long reach of delinquent networks in late adolescence on criminal activity in early adulthood. Good afternoon, everyone. So relationship formation is a key facet of the transition from childhood to adulthood. That can include um, becoming friends with people, gaining peers, and also engaging in romantic relationships. Now there's a dearth of criminological literature that has found strong linkages between peer delinquent behavior and our own. And relatively recent work has also found the same when it comes to delinquent behavior of your romantic partner. However, to the left, most of this research um, only includes uh, information at one time point. And usually it's either before, during, or after average peaks in delinquent behavior among American youth. Furthermore, many studies do not include both delinquent romantic partners and delinquent peers as predicted variables. What my research then goes to is, does delinquent peers and romantic partners influence future criminal behavior? I utilize the Toledo Adolescent Relationship Study, which started in 2000 by interviewing over 1,300 adolescents and parents in the Toledo area. It was actually funded by our own National Center for Family and Marriage Research at BGSU. And I looked at the long-term impact of having delinquent peers and romantic partners in late adolescence, so around the age of 18. That is when usually delinquency peaks on future offending at about 25. What I found was having delinquent peers and romantic partners was significantly associated with higher odds of criminal behavior in your 20s when delinquency usually falls off. I found something further when I pulled apart the data even more. Uh, normally, the threshold for determining delinquent peers or delinquent partners is greater than mean delinquency of the sample. However, when I raised that threshold, I found that having only one node of delinquency, so either a delinquent partner or delinquent peers, was no different than having neither. What does this mean? This essentially means that if you have a tie to a non-delinquent peer or non-delinquent romantic partner, you're less likely to commit criminal behavior in early adulthood. As such, we can use my research that I use for my thesis for programs such as the Find One program. It's an idea in which individuals within high school can connect with individuals who are not delinquent or do not have delinquent peers or partners and find that one person that can help reduce future offending. Thank you so much. <laughs> 